From the Game Boy Studios, nightly at 7 p.m. This is GB24. Hello, yes, and welcome to this, the very special first opening night of Fringe Festival on this, the 12th of November, 2020. My name is Joshua Porter. With me, as always, is my brother here in the GB24 studios, Eden. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you, Josh. Very well indeed. You're looking a little off colour yourself, Josh. <laughs> Yes, I look very app. different. It's almost as if we had to change from a good quality camera to a web camera at the last minute, isn't it? <laughs> Typical us. <laughs> or oh, you've yes. just got some jaundice. But any, anyway, we're I here. Think, I think j just on that, though, uh, so this this is the lesson. If you're going to buy an adapter, don't get a Chinese one because I think Bill O'Reilly subs it up best because he might say that this thing sucks. Right. Fucking thing <laughs> sucks! <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Well, guys, welcome. You're here, GB24. That's right. We're live in this studio from different, totally different suburbs. Um, the show is going to be different every single night. So please join as much as you can. Um, 7 o'clock, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's going to be a hell of a show. Yes. And we are simulcast on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook throughout the festival. Uh, tonight, we are just on Twitter, but if you guys want to check it out, Game Boys Comedy uh, is our handle across everything. Uh, but the main thing is you want to jump into the Fringe stream. That's where we've got the live chat. That's where we'll be chatting with you guys as well. Uh, should be a lot of fun. And uh, anything else from you, Aiden? No. Um, I think let's have a look what's on tonight's show. First up, we're going to have the mystery sound back by popular demand. Yes, and we'll be heading over to Shopper's Corner with Moira for some exciting new products. We've also got a Dan Andrews press conference coming in. Yes, and Eden will be giving us one of his world-famous true Aussie Wood stories. Um, and just before we get into the show, I did want to mention, uh, as part of NADOC week, uh, we were going to hang an Aboriginal uh, and Indigenous flag within the studio, uh, but the bosses upstairs uh, didn't really want that. For some reason, I don't know why. I don't know why you wouldn't do it, but we didn't get the go-ahead for that one. Um, <laughs> Harry Connick <Kind of> Jr. <laughs> just um, to know but just now it is it. time. It is time now for the mystery sound. Uh, so we'll go to the mystery sound. <laughs> And if you're familiar with commercial radio in the last 30 odd years, you will understand the concept of the mystery sound. Uh, there's going to be a sound we're going to play and you guys have to guess what it is. We don't know what it is either. Uh, so uh, make sure you get your guesses know. into the live chat. Uh, so can we hear the mystery sound, please? Oh, okay. Well, what do you think it is? It's well, long. I, it's long. It's very long. I, at first, I thought it was um, was someone like uh, getting uh, the last little bit of a Slurpee, um, but through one of those like corrugated sort of straws, like not a regular corrugated straw. straw. Yeah, yeah, corrugated straw. What's a corrugated straw? Eat? Well, when you're out in the farm, you, you got your corrugated roof shed, get a corrugated straw. All right, good one. <laughs> what do you uh, think? It sounded it sounded very organic to me. I I was leaning towards a pig or something like that, uh, oh. but it dragged on a lot. It did um, drag it sounded, on a lot. It sounded a bit like a pig on a motorcycle. I'll just check the live chat. Yeah, check the um, chat. If anyone's got any uh, guesses, we've got a Ooh. pug drinking the last bit of drink through a straw. Very elaborate pug there through a corrugated straw, no doubt. 
Oh, okay. Well, we do have um, moustaches looking strong. Um, not really, I guess, but still, uh, <laughs> thank you, ladies and gentlemen, especially you ladies out there. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, we've got koalas. Koalas in the chat. Oh, well, all pug drinking. Yes, that's good. A okay, pig orgasm. Isn't it? What's what's the thing with pigs? They've got curly curly dicks. No, that's ducks. That's ducks. Oh, um, I yeah. do like this one though. The a warthog drinking a Slurpee. I'm putting my money on a warthog drinking a Slurpee. I think, I think that's it's, yeah. I think it's quite clear. It's some sort of pig-like thing. Uh, that's that's the hot guess drinking something through a straw. I think that's what some we've got. sort of hog. One of the hogs. Yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's wild hogs. Maybe it's uh, what Tim Allen, Tim Allen. Um, William, William H Macy, John Travolta. <laughs> It's some, sort of hog. it's some sort of hog. It's some sort of hog. Excellent. We'll, we'll check back that later on the show, I think. Um, mm -hmm. I think now, actually, uh, yeah, I think we've got the Dan Andrews press conference ready to go. So let's uh, check on him now. Okay, uh, everybody right to go? No. Okay, now I think it's time we cross over to Shopper's Corner. That's right, we've got the lovely Moira over there, and she's got another product with us. So uh, let's cross to her now. Thanks, Aiden. Well, here we are in Shopper's Corner. You don't need any more, though. Well, who are no. you with me? I'm David, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a shopaholic, they call me. Oh, that's great. Thanks very much, David. Uh, I've got a bit of audio on the video there, but that's not a problem. Now, the thing that we're most excited to talk about today, what, what you've got you've got saunas, right? What is the most frustrating thing about a sauna, Reed? David? Oh, the, David? You have to go there. You have to go there, don't you? Mm. So the key is sauna pants. This is solving all those issues that you have with the agony of going to the local pool, going to the local gym oh. for just a simple sauna. Wouldn't it be better to have the whole thing packaged up in a pant? Oh, look at that, Moira. Now that puts the sauna where you want it to be. Yes. Oh, and if we could just pause the footage here, you'll see that with our patented orange technology uh, that's water resistant, it actually extricates the toxins from the body by rotating the water around the limbs and around the legs. It's very exciting stuff, Peter. David, I can't remember. Now, what, uh, what is the uh, significance of the orange color? Why have they gone with orange for the sauna pant? Yes, well, the best thing about sauna pants is you can take them anywhere. And the most important place that you probably want to sauna is when you're going on a mountain hike. Uh, because oh. the orange is a safety feature that if you so happen to be in your tent and stranded in the wilderness, bare grill style, you've got the bright orange sauna pants there ready for action. Love it. Love now, it. What, what, is, what, is, what, for you, what for you is the most frustrating thing about the sauna? The sauna, I, it's that I, I get all sweaty all over, you know? Sometimes I just want the sweat localised to my groinal region. Yes, exactly. And that's why we invented sauna pads. Now, sauna pads are great for all kinds of activities, including oh, gaming. Look at that guy. So for the gamers out there, you'll love sauna pads. And the best thing about sauna pads is you can get this beautiful, amazing product for just three simple payments of $79,995. Because the thing about playing video games, he, d he definitely looks like he's playing something. But um, he's also, he's also, so, and Moira, tell me, it's, I tell you what, it's quite flattering around the junk area. So <laughs> for those gentlemen out there, extra bonus. <laughs> exactly. Extra bone. All right. Yes. Well, yours to, yours to have for three, simple pains, 79, 995. That's sweat, uh, so, so I was going to say sweatpants, not sweatpants at all. They're sauna pants. So make sure you call now and order a pair. Thank you very much. Uh, back to you guys in the studio. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Quick transition, hey, isn't it? Summers, Mr. Summers. Oh, yes. Oh, what did you, you need? Sorry, I didn't warn you we'd finish that sketch and you looked like dicks <laughs> taking off your scarves. Bye. Get out of here, Dickie. <laughs> Oh, classic God, Dickie. Dad. Look, we, we are just, we're just having too much fun here. It's fine. We're having too much we're fun. We're going to have too much fun here. Well, thank you, Daryl. Thanks, Daryl. Um, now, we're going to take a short break, but make sure you stick with us. Now, in the second half, there is going to be a big clue to the murder mystery. There's a murder mystery going on in the GB24 studio. Keep your eyes out. There might be a clue to who the murderer is coming up in the second half. Keep your eye out for that, but stay with us after these short messages. Uh, we'll be right back.
Fringe Festival. What's that controller? It's Pikachu. products there some great great products for you to sink your teeth into isn't that right josh mm, yes yeah, especially visiting a great visit down to game boy studios lots of fun to be had there and delicious cups yes edible, delicious cups edible cups at game boy studios don't have that everywhere do you and then when you're down there make sure you stay at the game boys nara resort <laughs> yes. everyone's welcome at the game boys nara resort down there yes. aren't they um i right. believe oh hang on sorry i believe we're uh dan andrews yes we're crossing back to the press conference now Now, uh, everyone right to go? No. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, they're still having a bit of trouble there. <laughs> oh, yeah, the camera is having a bit of trouble with you. Cut, edit point on that one. Well, you, you've got to forgive him. <laughs> in the control room tonight. <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to give him some credit. He's on a slingshot after all. Like, he, doesn't <laughs> yes. know if, he doesn't know if he's coming. He doesn't even know if he's coming or going. Whoa. The camera is on a slingshot. He's on a Isn't it? The camera. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There we oh, go. There is. After all, Eden, this is live. This is all live. Here we are, live. We're live. We're live in the game. Well, do it studio. live. A... Fuck it. <laughs> do it live. And uh, just a re just a reminder for my pale, pale face. Uh, just before the show, shocking, shocking glitch with other equipment. Shocking webcam. Thank you. <laughs> um, I will have a look at the chat now. We have some um. We have some feedback on the sauna pant. Um, we've got here uh, new meaning to getting your dick wet. Um, and <laughs> I, I love how seamlessly they fit under my skirt. <laughs> I like this one. See, the secret sound is Daniel Andrews wearing sauna pants. <laughs> I think that's why they had such a big podium, isn't it? He's had so oh. sort of pants on the whole time. That's why he did 120 days in a row, just that's to get why. that trim and terrific on those presses. That is why. You bring up a very good point there. Um, what have we got up next, Josh? Uh, I believe it's time for one of your world-famous uh, true Aussiewood stories, Eden. Yes. So sit back and relax. Ah, welcome to another Eden <laughs> true Aussiewood story. That's one today. Segment where we tackle some of the biggest names in Australia and we see what they're doing now or what's become of them. And tonight we're going to take a step back to our childhood. That's right. We're going to talk about a very, very important man, someone that had a big influence on me and my squiggle drawing, if you know what I mean. Yes, that's right. We're talking about Mr. Squiggle today. Mr. Squiggle, he's fun for everyone. Mr. Squiggle, sing a happy tune. Mr. Squiggle, the man from the moon. That's right, Mr. Squiggle was actually <laughs> from the moon. Now, I'm just going to let you know here, he was actually from 93 uh, Crater Crescent on the moon, Mr. Squiggle there. Um, and uh, Josh, I'd like to pass it over to you. I'd like to say, how long do you think Mr. Squiggle was on the air? Mr. Squiggle, I have really clear memories of watching Mr. Squiggle. So mm -hmm. I reckon it was like seven or eight years or something, right? Like a good, to, to be as popular as it is. <laughs> seven or eight <laughs> years? Yeah. Seven or eight years? Okay. Add 32 more years to that, mate. Oh. <laughs> was, yeah, right. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Squiggle um, has been on the show. He was one of the longest on running the show. kids shows. On the been show. On his show. own show. He's one of the longest running kids shows. been around for 40 years. That's right. Mr. Squiggle started in 1959 and went, oh, sorry, <laughs> upside down, upside down, upside down. That's the classic. That's the classic. Um, yes, it was started in 1959 and went all the way to 1999, just before so there you the, go. the 2000s. Hmm. Yeah, so my my experience of it was probably seven or eight years. But I guess, yeah, way older than that. What's what's yep. Mr. Squiggle been up to since retirement? Did he retire? Well, he, he did retire. Did he had to send into space. Yeah, well, he went back to the moon on his rocket. On his rocket, his rocket called Rocket, evidently enough. <laughs> Do you remember the other the other characters he had was Blackboard, was, obviously. With yeah, there was, the, you there was like a, um, wasn't that like a dump truck guy or something with a mouth yes, or something? There was Bill, Bill the dump truck. Yep. And there's also, you might remember, Gus the snail. He was always telling bad knock-knock jokes. We love him. Oh, um, that's right. But I will tell you this. So it was created by Norman um, Hetherington, 
right? Back in the day, good old Norm. Oh, there he is. There, Josh, do you want to just pop out? Yeah, there's Norm. So there, it was it was a passion for his entire life, Norm. Um, it's very interesting. I'll just I'll, I'll give you this little note in terms of Norm's life. He was actually in World War II, um, but he served in the first Australian entertainment unit. That's Wonderful. right. Was he like, very... uh, was he did a bit of that for the troops, the cartoonist on Hey Hey, just draw little cartoons on the yeah. battlefield? Yeah, just shooting those damn crowds. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was there. Um, um, so, but I will tell you, I will tell you this though, um, and this I'll give you this right now. So you you remember how it was always upside down? Blackboard was always like upside down, upside down. It was yeah, always yeah. Upside down. You remember that? Well, he, here comes Eden's fact of the day. Sorry, I thought we'd have some sort of <laughs> fact of the day. <laughs> Kind of thing. Oh, there hey. we go. Back to the day. The reason why it was upside down so much is because Norman was in the rafters looking at the paper upside down, controlling Mr. Squiggle. So he was drawing it the right way for himself to see up there. No way. And as a result, he would do the cartoon and do it all, and then it would be turned upside down to reveal that it was the right way. So he's actually just controlling him as a puppet and yeah. giving enough pressure to draw it all. Yeah, yeah. So they started with like a felt felt marker, then they went to chalk. They tried all different techniques on the nose, but he's literally no control controlling that from above and it's actually drawing like, every single line. It's a bit like Mr. Squiggle of the Opera or something hanging up in the rafters. <laughs> yes, you're, well, he's you're up there with wear, a mask. He did wear. He was like, in the, yeah, Miss in the wall. In Miss the wall. He was, Hello, he was disfigured and wore a mask to cover his face after the war. Um, let's see if the socials have anything, any love for uh, Mr. Squiggle there. Um, great. We've got a great see. question from Planet Data who says, who lived at numbers 1 to 92 <laughs> on, on Crater Crescent? It's a good question. It's a very good question. What's the, yeah. um, the sea of tranquility? And it's right on the sea of tranquility, which isn't on Earth. It's a sea on the moon. Oh, that's a good trivia thing for you. Yes. Um, steam shovel was Bill. Yes, very good. And he used to eat rocks. Every day, except he, there was one episode where he ate moon rocks, and of course, moon rocks float, and Bill floated <laughs> away. So they had to tether him to the ground. Oh, I've watched a lot of Mr. Squiggle recently. <laughs> I like people are asking what 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 grade of pencil was Mr. Squiggle? <laughs> two B, my look, two B. Two B. He's a two B. Got to be two B, right? Yeah, exactly, uh, mate. Uh, and I think I think everyone loved Mr. School and everyone had a moment. So that's pretty much. Uh, I think I've really encapsulated everything. Uh, there, there he is. Oh, live in action. Miss he had Jane. um. He had several. He had Miss Jane. He had Patricia uh, Lovell. He had uh, Gina Curtis. Miss Jane, I remember uh, quite a lot. Roxanne and Rebecca was another one that they had near the end. Right. There, always helping they, out. They don't make them like that anymore, do they? No, they don't make them with two B pencils in the schnoz and a man hanging from the rafters. And a man hanging from the anymore. rafters. Well, I think that's pretty much everything we had on Mr. Squibble tonight. So thank you for another true Aussiewood story. Yes, well, that's all we got time for tonight. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll be back. No. Oh, of we'll course, we're going to go sound. to the Mystery Sound. We haven't done the Mystery but Sound yet, Josh. We've got to, I've we've completely got to... thrown it. Any, um, so uh, we any had other... it, yeah. We... I think we had a lot of guesses around koalas, pugs, pigs. Get your final guesses in. We'll hear the mystery sound once more, please. The old uh, John Travolta there. <laughs> is it? It's, is it? It's almost Tim Allen esque. It's very. <laughs> it's, it's, it's if there was a crossover episode of of is it Wild Hogs at Home Improvement where the gag rocks up. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, Jill, Jill, I'm so sorry. It's just my old motorcycle buddies. <laughs> oh, I, can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't. <laughs> they know. Um, they know at home. Well, I, think, I don't think we've got any more uh, fresh guesses. No, uh, but it seems like koalas, pigs, let's reveal the mystery sound. It was a koala mating call. Someone got that. It was definitely people in the chat looking up. Oh, there it is. Live. Live. We had... Someone definitely got koala. EFB call. said a koala's mating call. Accurate and correct. <laughs> oh, well accurate. Good on you. Good on you. Um, tonight, actually, actually, no, I think we do finally. Yes, yes, Dan Andrews press conference. Yes, we can go there then. Okay, thanks. Uh, are we right to go? Okay, great. Um, now, I just wanted to inform uh, you all that uh, there was a period of time when this show was conceived and written, that these conferences were happening daily. We had 120 in a row. We spent a lot of time producing this purple background uh, with the expectation of using it a lot during this season. Uh, unfortunately, they have scrapped this. 
<laughs> so all the work used to create the purple background is fundamentally wasted. Uh, so we uh, thank you for your support for everyone, uh, but know that there was a lot of effort put into this and we won't be able to use it for the entire season. So thanks. Such a shame, such a shame there. But we've had a lot of fun tonight and I hope you guys have too brought us to the end of the show this evening. Uh, do remember, it's uh, on every single uh, night, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if you dis <laughs> if you don't include Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> but every night. Um, but we'll, but we'll, be doing highlight, we'll be doing highlight shows on the nights off, oh, so you can always tune in at 7 and there'll be something to watch. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it is live going out. It is going to be different every night. Um, we're not going to have Koala mating call ever again. Um, but if you like the show, please donate. Shoot us some money. Um, we're doing a bit of a season pass thing, so you can put some money in now. And we hope just tune into some of the other shows as they go on. So we've got the next three weeks ahead of us. Isn't that right, Josh? Yeah, we've got some exciting stuff. Uh, we're going to have guests on the show throughout it. Um, so make sure you're telling your friends. Uh, spread the word on socials as well. It really helps. We'll be streaming a lot. So, yeah, 7 o'clock every night. Keep an eye out. Uh, but thanks so much for watching, and uh, see you tomorrow. See you later, guys.